right? He was. He wasn't saying, all right, Stuart, you can hang out in the crowd and follow along with me. He was telling me that. I was saying, no, heck it. He was calling me to take up my cross. Just like he's calling you today to take up your cross. We've already talked about my going to these four other guys and telling them that it would never be. Telling them that this dream that we fought for, this, this, this passion of our lives, we copy wrote songs together, y'all. I don't know if you know how big it is. Like, it's harder to get out of a man than it is to get out of a marriage. Don't try to get out of that. But I'm just saying, I won't know. But uh, when I told them that the good life that God had planned for me wasn't going to jive with our dreams that we had for each other and for our future, they were destroyed. They immediately dismissed and discounted God altogether, in spite of the changes they'd seen him make in my life. Well, what does that tell you about you? What does that tell you about the people in your life when they see you change the Jesus? Some of them won't make it with you on the front end. You see, they felt betrayed by me and by God. Some of your friends are going to be feeling betrayed by you and by God because he's going to put a distance between you. They watched me change from the inside out. But they had no idea that change was going to affect them so greatly. But listen, they weren't alone. They weren't the only people that felt alienated by the change in my life. What about all those people I've been partying with for years? How many of you have even done the math on it? Some of you have because you've done a background like mine. You know exactly what I mean. When Jesus changes your life and you're no longer willing to walk around back in the crowd, it's going to have an effect on your relationships. What about those people that I've partied with for years? One man actually comes to mind to me specifically. Uh, his name, believe it or not, is Charlie Brown. You don't get that? Are these kids too young to know who Charlie Brown is? <laughs> the adults know. He's a West Virginia hillbilly. His parents didn't know him better. They named him Charlie Brown. And that was his name. I would have interviewed Charlie for this session tonight, but uh, he's in the penitentiary. And couldn't be interviewed. In fact, in fact, I'm kind of getting ahead of myself a little bit. Charlie and many others from that former season of my life watched my life change for Christ. That change drew me further and further away from the person that they were used to meeting with. That change drew me further and further away from the man they were comfortable with. That they were comfortable with being around. How many of you in here have been following the call of God for your life and some of the associations that you used to run around with? They don't feel comfortable around you anymore. Here's the good news, though. When Charlie's kids began to get in trouble, guess who he called? He may not be comfortable being around me because I made him feel guilty. He may not be comfortable being around me because of the change in my life and the way it felt, made him feel about his own life. But when his kids got in trouble, he called me. And I led both his kids to Jesus. Amen. And I baptized both of them. <laughs> now, years later, Charlie was sentenced for possession of methamphetamine and sent to prison for a very, very long time. He's still in prison. But while he was in Dillon, South Carolina, waiting to be transferred, he called me. And I went to that jailhouse and I saw him. I led him to Christ too. It took eight long years of prayer and passion and love and care, but it eventually paid off. And I got to pray with that man through a glass with a phone like you see on TV. And the stairway to heaven dropped down into Dillon Prison. And it's been walking up and down from him ever since when he's angry, even though he's in jail. <laughs> but I can tell you this. Me and Charlie are going to be, ready, be together in glory. He and I will walk the streets of gold together. And all this prison stuff will be just a me. And this is just one story among many, many, many dozens that I can share with you today. Others will come in the months and years that God leaves us together and that we serve together. But I will say this, though, that with time, even the guys who must have cracked, even they who felt so betrayed by me and my God, by the change in my life, they weren't home for my life forever either. When they need help, they will call Because they've seen that you know where the help is in your life. Your presence may make them feel absolutely and totally uncomfortable with the decisions they're making and the choices that they're making. Your living for Christ may absolutely tear them out of the frame because they're not ready to make that choice with you. But I can promise you, when they need help, 
They'll call you. Because they know that you have the source that you buy them. The good life of Christ that we've talked about today. Are you living it? Are you? Is your life for Christ all you wish, planned, hope, dreamed it would be? More importantly, is it all God would have it be? Is your life for Christ all God would have it to be for Him today? Why? Better yet, why not? Now that we know what it will take, now that we all know what it will take to follow Christ with our lives, what are you prepared to do? Jesus claimed to be the passageway, the stairway to the good life that God has planned for you right now. What you choose to do in those circumstances when that good life differs from what you want in your flesh or it differs with the contemporary wisdom in your life that others are speaking will be the measuring stick of the degree for which your life and your heart language will count for Christ. Today I'm again at the cusp of another big step in my life. Another step in the good life that God has for me. I'm at the cusp. It's a lot to be in a position like mine, and God's given me a certain degree of discernment, I guess, as a gift that, uh, that I'm very, very happy that he, He's given me. But God lets me see things and hear things sometimes. And um, I'm at the edge of a very, very great big step in the good life that God has for me right now. And these steps impact and are very, very dependent upon you. They truly are. I am here to lead this ministry. To make an impact for Christ. And share the good life he promises. Let me say that again. Look at me. In case you're wondering. The reason why Stuart Pritchett was sent to Chapel Baptist Church. And why I'm here in Mercy Student Ministries. I am here. To lead you. To share the good life. And the heart language of Jesus Christ with this community. Mm -hmm. If you think it's anything other than that. You totally miss the point of me. Here. That's okay. I'm going to say it one more time. Then we can all walk out of here and know exactly what I meant when I said this. If you're here today listening to me, the reason I'm here today speaking to you is that God sent me here to be part of the solution to this church's student ministry, taking the heart language of Jesus Christ and the good life that that provides to the community around us. I want you to go with me. 